Greetings YouTubers, welcome to my video. I bought the cheapest new solid state drive I could find on eBay. The ADATA SU630 240GB uh, SATA 3 drive in a 2.5 inch form factor. $24.99 with free shipping. So this video kind of documents my experiences and uh, we will start with an unboxing. So enjoy. All right, so here it is. No carton. It just came in a padded mailer. I kid you not. So I was just kind of amazed when it showed up. I didn't even know what it was. I thought, well, this can't be it. Where's the box? So no box. Maybe that's how they got the price down to 25 bucks. They, uh, they saved up a few pennies on the carton. So let's have a look. See if it survived the shipping process. And there it is. Looks like it's on a, a, a blister pack, you know, a card for hanging on a peg or something. <clears throat> and there's nothing else in that envelope. That was it. No documentation, no packing list, no nothing. So what you see there is what I got. So let's get this hoss open. I do hate anti-theft packaging. All right. And there's baby. Not much to see. Just kind of a conventional uh, looking solid state drive. Really lightweight though. That's my first And no, there's nothing else in the um, in the carton either. Well, the, the not carton, the, the card package. That's all I got. So that's what I got for 25 bucks. All right, I had to put it in a um, a three and a half inch drive caddy because it's going into a um, a slot that's for the larger you know form factor. And this is a really cheap uh, metal drive caddy that I already had in my junk collection. I got a like a junk box of computer parts that are used or I didn't never use them or whatever leftovers. So this was some leftover from my previous project. I didn't I didn't buy it just for this. And um since the solid state drive didn't come with any screws, I used these screws that came with the the cheap drive caddy. So fortunately they fit. And um it went together without any issues. Um no problems. The the screws fit. I was kind of concerned. I mean, the thing was so cheap, I was afraid I was going to strip out the screw holes. So I was kind of, um, kind of careful with it. I want to break my new solid state drive, but it, it fit onto the caddy without incident. All right, here it is mounted in its new home. I put that sticker on there so I would remember when I installed the thing for warranty purposes. So that was a, a three and a half inch drive bay. And this is what it's installed in. It's an old uh, Hewlett Packard uh, ProDesk 600. It's got an i7 processor in it and um, fourth generation and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it's old, but it's a fairly capable system. So it's kind of a like a retired office drone. This thing had a ton of reviews on eBay and Amazon. So I read through those and I kind of concentrated on the negative reviews since it was such a, a cheap drive. And one of the most common complaints was it feels cheap. So I can confirm that it, that's true. It does feel cheap. It feels light as a feather, like there's nothing there. So it's like a SD card with a cable on it. Another common complaint is it runs hot. So that remains to be seen. We'll just have to check on that and, um, and we'll find out later in the video if it runs hot or not. But um, that was one of the more popular negative reviews is that the thing was too hot so i don't know we'll see what else we got another popular complaint is it's too slow uh some some of the reviewers some of the negative commenters actually said oh it's slower than a conventional hard disk drive and um, 
or it's it's fast at first and then it slows down and you know stuff like that so again um later on in the video we'll check up on some of that do a fact check and see if it's really sl that slow now here is disk management on uh, windows 10 right after i installed the thing so this is the first time i powered it on and it showed up just fine on disk management so that's a good sign that uh, windows disk management recognized it without any drama and then here it is again after I formatted it. I just created a, a simple volume just to see if Windows Disk Manager could see it and um, and format it, and it did. So disk management works without any issues. Now this is a screenshot of Gparted under uh, MX Linux. So I'll just give you a quick tour of my um, partitions. I installed Windows first, and the main Windows partition used to go all the way to there. It took up all that space, so I shrunk the Windows volume to make room for the um, the Linux partition later on. And then this is the EFI boot partition. The Windows installer created that. I had nothing to do with that. So I just let Windows installer do its thing. And that's one of the partitions it put there, the, um, the EFI. That is a, a mystery partition that Windows put there. I don't know what it's for, but I did not tinker with it. Not a good idea to tinker with Windows mystery partitions. I created that partition with Gparted. That's my MX partition. So that's where I installed the MX operating system. Again, um, it went without incident, no trouble. This is my swap partition. Some people think, oh, you don't, you know, you don't really need swap anymore. It's unnecessary. Um, I don't know if you really need swap anymore, but I created the partition. I don't know why I made it so big. So anyway, I created a big, huge swap partition, um, whether it's necessary or not. Here is another mystery partition that Windows created. I was careful not to tinker with it because I don't know what it's for. I think it's a recovery partition. I'm pretty sure, but I, I'm not sure about that. But uh, again, I don't tinker with mystery partitions that Windows creates because you don't know what it's going to do. And then for some reason, the Windows installer left a little bit of unallocated space. So I don't know what that's about, why it didn't just use the whole disk. Here's the other disk. It's just a, uh, it's a Toshiba two terabyte conventional hard disk drive. And uh, I formatted it as XFAT so that it would be compatible with both Windows and Linux. So this way, both operating systems, Windows and MX, can read to it and um, can read from it and write to it without trouble. So I know it's kind of weird to to format an internal disk drive as XFAT, but that's what I did just for um, compatibility. And there is my MX desktop, and um, there's my big disk. I named it Storage. That's the conventional drive, showing all my um, my junk storage. All right, I know this is kind of cheesy, shooting my uh, screen with a cell phone camera, but I don't have a capture card, so here we go. I'm pushing the button right now, and you can time it yourself. Boom. And then we'll go to Windows Boot Manager. Boom again. And we get the string of pearls. And we're there. That was pretty quick, folks. All right, so here we are back in Windows again. I've got Crystal Disk Info pulled up on the left side and Crystal Disk Benchmarking on the right side. So this is the, um, the Crystal Disk Information and Benchmarking for the new a data 25 buck solid state drive it doesn't look abysmally slow it does show the temperature at 54 degrees celsius which is kind of hot you know which kind of lines up with the you know what people were complaining about but i i actually touched the the casing of the solid state drive and it doesn't feel hot at all in fact it feels room temperature so i don't know if it's a some kind of faulty sensor or what but i guarantee you that drive isn't really 54 degrees c it's a Basically, room temperature. I don't. I'm gonna de detect any. Warm I've had it running for quite a while, and I don't detect any warming at all. So, for comparison, 
Here is the Toshiba conventional drive that's installed in the same system. And notice that it is markedly slower. So the complaint about, you know, the, the, um, the A-Data uh, SU630 is slower than a conventional drive. That's not true. Now, in all fairness, I do have this conventional hard drive formatted for XFAT. Maybe it would be faster if it was formatted in uh, NTFS. I don't know about that. But um, anyway, there's your comparison. Well, look, we'll, we'll just go side by side with it. It's easier. So here was the speed check, the benchmark check from um, Crystal Disk for both drives. So you can kind of judge for yourself. So you can see there's a pretty good contrast between the solid state drive on the left and the conventional platter based drive on the right. So this concludes my review of the cheapest solid state drive I could find on eBay, the ADATA SU630. I think I got my money's worth. I hope it holds up for a year. Um, if I have any trouble with it or a premature failure, I will do a follow up here and uh, let you know what happened. But for now, I think the thing was worth 25 bucks. It was a budget drive and it seems to work fine. I don't have any um, complaints with it. So thanks for watching my video and uh, take care.